The Jean Machine is a Victorian-era point-and-click adventure game with a real love for the works of Jules Verne and Robert Louis Stevenson, so you might as well add steampunk to the genre description automatically. You are Piers Fanshaw, and with the help of your long-suffering servant Mossop, you must stop the evil Dr. Dinsey from using his titular Jean Machine to create an evil army of mutants to take over the world because a talking cat told you so. For all his suave demeanor and proper attire, Piers has all the self-belief of a Sherlock Holmes figure, but none of the intelligence. As with most adventure games of the time, the gameplay is pretty simple to grasp. You acquire items, combine them with other items, or the world at large to progress the plot of your adventure. When not doing that, you'll be engaged in a hunt for said items and detailed conversation with the various inhabitants of the lands you end up traversing across. The term witty repartee encapsulates the tone of this endeavour, with lots of sardonic sentences and wisecracks to keep you amused. For the most part, it's well-acted dialogue too, with poor Mossop becoming a bit of a verbal punching bag throughout the course of this fantastic voyage. This will either delight or confound players, as it makes Piers quite the unlikable protagonist at times. And he does have a tendency to talk a lot. The artwork is a mixture of excellent hand-drawn backgrounds and the occasional bit of 3D rendering that looks out of place. Every so often you'll get 3D rendered cut sequences too, but these are less egregious to the eyes when they comprise the entire screen. The characters themselves and many of the items are distinctive though because of their timeless cartoon style. This makes the inevitable item hunts that point and click adventures consist of somewhat easier, but the art direction is an acquired taste. Likewise, the music isn't anything spectacular. You'll not find the epic scores that LucasArts and Sierra were so good at gracing this title. It's purely serviceable and appropriate for the most part. As aforementioned, if you're big on Victorian-era literature, then the plot of this adventure will play like a deft homage, and you'll easily be able to spy the multitudinous references. A robust gentleman's education improves the participant's engagement and enjoyment of this title, and should your literary lexicon loom large, then pernicious problems permeating playthroughs can be disregarded due to the deft usage of tropes. This is not a game with a huge budget, and it was the last one developed by a small British studio called Divide by Zero, who specialised in these point-and-click adventures, and was one of only two DOS titles published by Japanese company Vic Tokai, who stopped publishing games entirely the year after. But for all these funding constraints, the Gene Machine's strong emphasis on point-and-click fundamentals sees it through. It was clearly crafted with a lot of care and heart, and that allows you to forgive it for its technical foibles. Unfortunately, it was a graphical adventure game released in the mid-90s, and faced the stiffest competition possible on all fronts. Almost entirely forgotten about by all but adventure anoraks, Pierce Fanshawe's adventures failed to save Divide by Zero in the face of such ruthless competition, and ended up being the death knell of the company. The game has been abandoned for a very long time, a sad state that's lamented by hundreds of its fans who cannot purchase it digitally. While forever relegated to the B tier or even C tier of great adventure titles, the Gene Machine surprised me. You might find that too if you can afford a forgiving playthrough with plenty of hindsight. This doomed period piece is provocative and well worth your time. Lonnie, away!